you know, you come back from the knee injury. I've seen this. I've watched this. I've watched you. Um, anytime anybody in any sport, especially at an elite level, misses time, you don't you don't just come back and plug right back in. It, you know, and so what was that like, I guess, to help explain a little bit, like when you do miss time, how far behind you are when you get back? I, I don't think I was. You don't? I really don't. I mean, I, I would argue this to the death. Yeah. I just, I... Um, where's the... I see what you mean, though. Where's, yeah, so, like, you, it's like, I'm waiting on, like, I feel like the you're going to break through, right, and be that old, you know, be that Chase Elliott that we know any any day, right? It's going to just, it's just going to happen any moment. But it feels like that that time off ha- had some effects on performance and setbacks. I mean, I think you could easily. I think that's the easy answer. Yeah. For for sure. Well, what is it then? You think? I I think that just the circumstances or just. No, I I really think we started to struggle at the end of twenty two, and and I think those things really just carried into twenty or no, I'm sorry. Yeah, it was last year. Yeah. 20, yeah at the end of twenty two, and and those things carried into into twenty three, and I, I what I saw was. When when the next gen car thing came out there in twenty two, we mm-hmm. fired off really well, yep. and we had a good a good first half of the season. You would look at the win column and and how the season ended up, and you'd be like, man, well they had a good year. They had a good year. Mm-hmm. I would look at you and tell you, we did not at all have a good year. We had a good first half of the year, mm-hmm. and and fortunately the points that we had accumulated over the first half of the year, um, just barely got us through the playoffs to have a shot at phoenix i mean i'm talking barely yeah um and we had a bunch of them you know a bunch of bunch of wins and and this and that and those things help you go a long way so i think what happened was no one really knew how to drive this thing at the beginning and i was getting away with how i drove the old car and and it was working you know to an extent um I don't think it was proper. It sure didn't feel proper, but it was better than others at the time. Yep. We had a good stretch through the summer. Um, and then it was like early fall, probably just a little before the late summer, early fall, right before the playoffs started. I feel like everything really switched and people started driving these cars differently and they started setting them up differently and really going into a different direction of – of. Um, from where we had previously been. And I think at that point, from that point forward, our struggles began right right then and there. And I saw it. I saw it happen. Um, some racetracks, you could kind of get away with it, and we'd have good runs, like yeah. Fontana the week before I got hurt. We ran really good. Had a shot to win the race, you know, and I just think the way that racetrack was shaped and whatnot, I got away with doing things the way that I had wanted to do them, you know, or had done them in the old car. Um and then I think, yeah, so I just think all those things carried into 23, and I think it probably took me all the way up until the end of last year to see some of the stuff. And that you needed to change. that I To recognize right. it. That, that's step one, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, obviously, I knew that some of these things were going on, but just really finding some of those details and, and looking at data and whatnot, it probably took me that long to, to recognize it with a really good understanding. Um, and then, you know, I would say the final probably two weeks of the year became uh, more about trying to implement some of these things. We were out of the points, you know, we were still on the owner's side, so we're trying to, I'm trying to balance putting good weeks together, but also I'm like, man, I've really got to make some changes to be where I want to be, you know, come you next specifically. year. Yeah, me specifically. Yeah, wow. Um, man, some drivers are not, some drivers are, me probably included, are too hard-headed to make changes to their style or the way they even, yeah. you know, use the race car. That is um, hard to make. It's hard. Golly, because you're like, no, it is hard. just make it do what I want it to do. Yeah, and I just don't think that's possible. Not anymore. I don't think it's possible <clears throat> in this thing, so I've accepted that. And you know. I hear um, a little, sorry to interrupt you, I hear a little bit of Kyle Busch saying this as well. He's like, man, I'm, I'm, I've not figured this car out. 
it's, it's super great. I think it's a really good point. Kyle and I have talked to each other about some of this because, you know, there's been times where, um, you know, and he even mentioned it to me one time. He's like, man, I feel like the things that we're struggling with are really similar. And I think they are. Uh, and, and so he and I have, have talked about some of this and whatnot in the last probably, you know, three or four months. And I think it's spot on, you know, like yeah. I, I totally, I, I just think the way that I got away with driving the old car is this thing. It just won't, it won't accept that. Mm-hmm. Um, so you gotta be willing to get outside your comfort zone. And I felt like, yeah, some of those things were recognized there at the end of last year, the final probably couple of weeks was me trying to adjust myself and and understand that better and then this year has just been full-blown me trying to transition into a different you know a different realm of of driving uh race cars and um i've really enjoyed the challenge because it it has pushed me outside of how i want to do things and uh i've i've truthfully had a lot of fun with that you know that's good yeah it's been it's been fun so as we watch you go through that process um literally i feel like any any minute it's gonna the switch is the light bulb's gonna come on and you're gonna be like it's gonna be back um you're gonna figure out the puzzle right but i want to step back and uh in the conversation around super late models grassroots racing yep you know i've heard you over even in the past you know year talk about how that's special to you that's important to you we see you just you know run a race somewhere right and and I don't know how those processes happen or how those decisions are made, but, um, you know, what is, how, I, you know, you ran the chili bowl one year for, for the hell of it. Yeah. Um, you know, is that a box you check and you're done or is these things just kind of on a whim? Is there, a, 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 a you know, is there a real strategy behind it? What, what is your, what is it with your, uh, you know, short track racing, grassroots racing and what you want to do? Yeah, I think, you know, some of the dirt stuff was definitely, hey, I want to go try this. It looks fun. Um, you know, could I be good at it? You know, do I have enough time to commit to to be good at to it? be good yeah. at it? And I and I think with some of that stuff, that is probably where I came to the realization of I I just don't I truthfully don't think I have a first off I don't want to go and suck all the time. Sure, you know, and I'm way too competitive for that. Mm-hmm. I get way too you know, way too involved. And, and I just, I want to be good at my job. I want to, I want to feel like I'm doing my part, you know, whether I'm driving on a small track on a Saturday night or on Sunday, like it's really that simple for me. Like I just, I just want to feel like I'm doing my part for my team Yep. and, and try to do a good job at it. And, um, I just don't know that, that I have enough time to commit to play catch up, you know, in, in some of those areas, uh, or in some of those disciplines, um, I would love to do more of it. I really would. I enjoyed it. You know, like I really enjoyed doing the 24 hour at Daytona. I thought it was a yeah. lot of fun. Um, I'd love to go back and do that again one day. Um, you know, would love to play around and, in, in dirt, you know, racing more, but I want to like, if I want to go play around in it, like I want to go race three or four nights a week Yeah. for years. And can you do that? Right. Yeah. And, you don't and even right now think I think you can, I, right now I don't feel like I oh, can. Yeah. And sure. And then, you know, it's not like people are calling you to want to come drive their cars. They want to get paid you for, know, sure. for me to come drive them. And I'm like, you yeah. know, I just, I don't, I don't want to get too far down that road. You know, like I, I have other things I need to be focused on right now. And, um, I don't think I have the time to go race three or four times a week and, and play catch up, sure. uh, like at the level that I want to do it. So, uh, but the asphalt late model side of things is, is definitely more of my background. And um, I have a lot of close friends that are really still involved in that world and in that discipline. Um, and I would say similar to me messing around with some of the dirt stuff, it was really just to kind of go play there at first. And it has transitioned from play to a little bit of me being competitive, but also me finding similarities in those cars and our cup cars. Um, and, and that has like what, um, I, I would say probably the, the biggest thing is the spool in those things acts a lot like the transaxle does in, in our cup cars and see when I was racing, um, late models, we could run, you could run lockers, you could run Gleason's, yeah. you could do whatever you wanted. Well, 
about the time I stepped away from all that stuff, they started implementing, you had to run a spool, you know, cause they thought that that was going to save them money, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yep. like every other sanctioning body. So, uh, they, they made a rule and, you know, said that you had to run spools and I never messed with it, you know? So when I went and started playing back in it, this was a change that had happened while I was gone, you know, basically. Um, and I, I just, I, I know those cars are lighter and they're different a hundred percent. Like they're, they're different, different tire, different this, different that. But as I ran a couple of those races, probably in the last two years, um, I saw myself struggling with the exact same things at those races that I struggle with on Sundays. And I'm like, okay, this is way too good of a connection for me not to take advantage of this and see if I can learn something here. So, um, just kind of fell into a good opportunity to go do some more of that last year and and I'm going to do more of it this year Uh, and that's really been the driving force behind it is a I enjoy it I love the people that I can go do it with and now I found a correlation that I think can help me do my job on Sundays so I really think I'd be silly to not to not go play yeah well I gotta say man I wanted to tell you before I let you go um, thank you for sharing uh, your experience and and going into detail there about one of the toughest days of your your life and professional career at least but also thank you for going back and racing in grassroots racing so i've had late models forever and i've always wanted to go race them and i've always been scared to do it i didn't want to get my ass kicked i didn't know what i didn't know and i was very very hesitant to do it and then when i saw you go do the chili bowl and I know you've raced short tracks for a long time before that, but you went when you went to do the Chili Bowl, I thought, man, if this guy can go do that and, and, and swallow his pride, know that he's not going to be the best, but still want to do it to experience it, then I need to get off my ass and go drive my late model car. And so that's really your, you literally going to do those things is what encouraged this old f- to go run his late model car at the end of his life, you know, at the end of his racing career. And so I'm turning 50 this year. I don't know how many more years I got before I'm just going to suck because I'm too old. But I'm finally out there doing it and having a blast. And it's thanks to you and um, having the the pride to go do that, you know, being able to swallow your pride and go do it. So I appreciate, I appreciate that. that. Um, I appreciate that. That's really cool. I didn't know that. That is exactly um, what happened, man. I was like, if I was thinking, man, if he – if he – I loved, I said it on this show a couple times. I was like, I love the fact that he's willing to go and know that he's not going to be great, but he just wants to experience it. And I was like, God dang, if I, yeah. need to, I, need to, I need to get over whatever the hell it is that's got me worried about going and getting my butt kicked by these kids in these late model cars. I just think it's, for me, that's really cool to hear because I'm a guy that often appreciates things that aren't said more than I do things that, are said Mm -hmm. um and i think that is a great example of you just never know who's listening yes and who paying attention is paying attention Mm -hmm. and um what effect you might have on someone that you would have never thought by you an action that you showed or or something that you went and did so i find that extremely extremely neat and um i uh yeah, yeah. I, I would have I would have never thought that, right? Oh, yeah. You know, so I just goes it's a it's a really good lesson. Well, it was very helpful, and I appreciate it. Um, when y'all, you know, I say y'all, but like when when you and William and you guys go and run these local racetracks, and I mean Kyle does it so much, Larson does it so much that it's just not even a thing. But like when any of our drivers, like Chase Briscoe, came and ran with the Cars Tour, I was like, man, that's so so cool. Um, because man, when you know, when we were growing up and before us, you know, our all our dads, they were going to these local tracks. You know, when they'd yeah. go racing, you know, Watkins Glen, they'd go to a short track on a Friday or Saturday night, sign out of grass and run a match race, right? Um, and yeah, so they did it all the time. Yeah, and it's starting, you know, now it's trying to kind of pick him back up a little bit, and it's good to see. Yeah.